hello everyone and welcome to my channel uh if you don't know i am in the middle of nowhere now uh, <laughs> there's like barely any cell service there's like two boosters on property and there's like sketchy internet so i will be sending vlogs out but this is like the week where vlogs can't happen so i'm just trying to film some random things to go up while i'm gone I feel like super awkward right now. Also, like I'm in my pajamas. I just there's no cares. This <laughs> this month has been so long and just so stressful for so many different reasons that I'm just like I don't even care. I had a three hour nap today. There we go. I had to wake up at five this morning to walk to work because no buses work at that time in this town and then I, I had to start working at six because otherwise it was too much to do before the event thing. So yeah. Fun times, but you know, we're had a three hour nap. We are good. We're going strong, although it is like so humid today and so muggy and so gross. I just, I just showered and I feel like, <sighs> anyway. So yesterday, I think, I don't know when this one's gonna go up, but I did a choose your own adventure book thing. And today I figured I'd talk about books because like I talk about writing a fair amount, but I also read a lot. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I read a lot when I'm not writing. So if I'm writing, I'm not reading. And if I'm reading, I'm not writing. I can't, I can't with the two of them at the same time. I don't know why. So this summer is coming up and I don't think I'm gonna be able to do a lot of writing, but we'll see. I'm hoping to do a lot of story planning. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. I'm like Ricky Bobby from Tagadella Nights right now. Um, <laughs> but I figured I'd talk about some of my favorite books because like I said, I love books. I don't have them all here with me because I actually brought some out to Blind Channel to one of the girls that works there when I was out there in April because uh, I was like, you need to read these books. I don't know if I brought, I, I don't remember which ones I brought out, but I remember two of them that I want to talk about. So anyways, I guess I'm just going to stop rambling and start talking about books. I don't, I've got, I've got a stack of books here. And I don't really know which order to go through them at. Is that proper English? I don't know. Anyways, so I'm going to start with this one. So it's by Christopher Bike, and it's called The Immortal. And the reason I picked this is this was the first book that made me cry ever when I got to the end. I have two books that have made me cry and why don't I have the other one here? Anyways, and this was the first one. And I, I, like I said, only two books have ever made me cry, which is surprising because like I've read Harry Potter and I was sure I was going to cry in the uh, sixth book. Didn't happen. But yeah, so this is about this girl who goes to Greece. This isn't going to be a review. And she goes with her best friend and then like weird things start to happen. She starts to have like dreams and stuff and um, trouble abounds. I don't know. It was a really enjoyable read. It's from like a really long time ago. Let's see. Copyright 1993. So yeah, very old book. I loved Christopher Pike when I was younger and that was like the young adult that I started reading. It was like Christopher Pike and R.L. Stein at the same time and I preferred Christopher Pike books. I was such a snob or thought I was at least. I guess while we're talking about Christopher Pike, I have this series by Christopher Pike. Um, that's upside down. It's called The Last Vampire Series. There are six books. I think actually post uh, Twilight, they re-released it in a book series called Thirst. I think, I never actually picked it up and read it, but like reading the back, it seemed very comparable or maybe it's like remastered or something. But yeah, this was, this is the first one and this was the book that like shaped what vampires are to me or I guess the book series and yeah I've read this book series so many times it has not aged well I don't think like the last time I read it I was like really um copyright 1994 so we're a year closer to the year, year year younger than the immortals so there's something about that but yeah anyway she's the last vampire or maybe so she thinks she is and these books are just kind of her dealing with problems that arise when you're immortal and I like really want to be immortal after reading this because she's like just so wealthy and doesn't age like ideal anyway <laughs> like I said I think they re-released this as thirst but this for me was like I said defining moment for what vampires were to me in the written world and even still to this day like if I'm going to write a story about vampires they're gonna be more based on these than sparkly shiny ones 
Next, we're going to go with Violet Eyes. Uh, this is by Nicole Lucan. And um, I don't remember where I picked it up. Let's, let's see how old this one is. Oh, 2001. That is so much newer. But yeah, my friend and I both read this, my friend Jessica, and we both fell in love with it. It's about... It's set in like 1987 and it's about this girl who's always been like perfect and the best and everything except every school she goes to everybody's always talking about this guy named Michael, her name is Angel, uh, who has always gone ahead of her and has always done much better things than she has. Like every trophy that is in the school has his name on it, every group of friends was like oh that's a great idea you have but Michael did it first kind of thing and the story kind of starts out with them ending up in the same town for the first time and then it kind of goes from there and it's really interesting and kind of it's got a nice twist to it and there are other ones like Silver Eyes and something else I read them over the summer and they were all right but they weren't nearly as good as the original but I mean that often happens with sequels like the first one is so good <laughs> next I'm going to talk about two, why am I doing it that way, two <laughs> different books. One's a series, one's just a book that I don't have with me because I sent them out to my friend. So the first one is Battle Royale by Koshun Takami. I might be saying that wrong, a uh, Japanese author. I read Hunger Games first and I'm really glad I read Hunger Games first. I thought the first Hunger Games book was pretty good. I would have chosen a different way to end it um, but then I just felt as the sequels went on it was just like okay it wasn't for me that it just it wasn't for me then I read Battle Royale and it's it's a book it's it's a book um, but it was so good it was gritty it was a lot more violent like there were points when I was reading I'm like I feel kind of sick because this is like so violent um, but it was really well done and I would if you liked Hunger Games I would seriously suggest reading Battle Royale so good I loved it I don't have I think I've read it twice 100% would read it again but like I said I've lent it to someone right now so have to wait the other book is a series it's called the Ashfall series and it's by this guy named Mike Mullen so the only the, the reason I found out about this book is the author followed me on Twitter and I was like oh I'll follow back and then I was like oh who is this oh he's an author that's cool got a book called Ashfall neat didn't really think anything of it and then I was in a chapters and I was like wait Ashfall Mike Mullen I'm gonna buy this because he follows me on Twitter great marketing on his part like anyways and it's it's the first book is like that big and the subsequent two are like equally as large and it is basically set in a world after the super volcano at Yellowstone National Park erupts and kind of dealing with the devastating ecological effects and then like looters and all that kind of stuff and the main character whose name escapes me right now because I don't have it with me he has been left at home that weekend his family is at his uncle's house and he's like I need to get to them and so thus begins his journey of trying to get to them and then the other books are kind of dealing in this like post-apocalyptic world as you know there's like animals are dying there's gangs yeah it was really good I don't typically read books with male protagonists and I don't know why I think it's just because I don't know I read a lot of books with female leads I don't know what it is but it was so good <laughs> I relate it so much like I could just get into that story so much and I would straight up be reading the book and I would expect to look up and see ash falling from the sky like that's how well the world was built out and creative and how descriptive it was so Ashfall series so good seriously it's worth the read even though I think each book is like 400 pages long or something so worth it all right so the next one is also a series so when I moved I got rid of a lot of books uh, ones that I've read a million times before, I didn't think I'd read again, Percy Jackson I loved, but I was like, you know what, I probably won't read this again. I've read it twice, but now I'm kind of, I kind of want to read it again, so I maybe regret that a little bit, but that's what e-readers are for nowadays. I'm trying, any of the books that I've gotten rid of that I'm like, you know what, I want to read again, I've just bought them so I can read them on my phone or whatever, and I love that. I do prefer to read books though, like give me a physical book any day, but it's nice to have the convenience of something like this when you're out in the middle of nowhere like I am this summer and I can just download books. The internet is good enough for that. But speaking of Percy Jackson, this series is also kind of modern Greek myth. 
things. It's the tale of Persephone and Hades, basically. It's called The Goddess Test by Amy Carter. There are three main books. I was just searching because I couldn't remember the name of the last one because there's The Goddess Test, Goddess Interrupt It, and I think the other one's The Goddess Inheritance. Um, it looks like there's a couple little novellas as well, but I never read those. But basically, the main character, she moves to this town. Her mom's really sick. She finds this, like, weird abandoned manor and meets this guy. I think his name's Henry. Yes, it's Henry. And he's basically Hades, and he needs to find a new Persephone. And so she needs to make a choice and also pass a test. But yeah, I, it was something that I just picked up randomly and I ended up really liking it and to the point that I sent it to my friend Jessica we share a lot of book recommendations and I was like you need to read this and so she did and she also liked it in fact she still has the third one so Jessica if you're watching this I know you aren't but give me back my book it's actually funny speaking of sharing books I I read this one series I can't remember what it was it was about witches though I think it was a trilogy and I read the first one and the first one was good and I read the second one and the second one was good and the third one was so terrible <laughs> that I lent her the first two books and I'm like I'm not letting you read the third book I'm just gonna tell you what happened in it because it was just so bad but yeah that's that's what good friends do all right so this book is fiction for sure but it super feels like non-fiction and I think that's why I loved it and hated it so much World War Z by Max Brooks it is such an amazing book and I say this all the time to people who haven't read it if I didn't know a zombie apocalypse hadn't happened, I would be convinced a zombie apocalypse did happen because it is so well written. If you don't know what it's about, it's an oral history of the zombie war. And it's basically a journalist going through and he's talking to people and writing their stories. Like, I remember there's a story about a guy who was able to hole up in a castle in England and he's like, you know, thank you for the queen. Never actually says the queen, but like her for letting us, you know, defend castles if we get to them. It never mentions people by name, but you know, it's like, oh, they're talking about Nelson Mandela there and stuff. And it was just so well done. <laughs> like, like I said, if you didn't know zombie apocalypse hadn't happened, you'd be like, oh, this is legitimately the history of it. And I hate zombies. I hate zombies. <laughs> I can't even finish Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time because of zombies. But I've read this book several times. It's really good. Again, it's something that's kind of shaped to zombies and like a post-apocalyptic zombie world for me. So if I ever write about zombies, it will be influenced by this for sure. Um, I hate zombies. But yeah, no, it's super well done. And if you haven't read it, 100% suggest reading it. It like goes from the start of the zombie war all the way through kind of the end and to where they are now which there's still zombie issues but not as much all right so i have two more book series to talk about i like series apparently I, i'm just like realizing that pretty much every single book i pulled or talked about was a series hmm. anyway i don't know which one to go with first because they're both very special to me i'll go with this one first harry potter Come on, if you haven't read Harry Potter, read Harry Potter. When Harry Potter first came out, I was like, oh yay, it's such a trend, honestly. Everybody in my class was reading it, and I think I was like in grade nine, grade 10 at the time. Oh, I'm aging myself. And I just thought it was a trend. Like, these are, these are people in my class that are reading kids' books. That is so stupid. And so book one came out, two, three, four, and five came out before my aunt gave me this for Christmas. And I was like, oh crap, she gave it to me, now I have to read it. And I am so grateful that she gave me this book because I loved it. I got through it so fast. I went on to the second one. I was living with my grandparents at the time and my grandma had all the books up to five. <laughs> and I was like, can I borrow your second book? Can I borrow your third book? And then she went out one day and came home with all the books for me because she was like, no, I want to read the books. So I was lucky enough that by the time I finished reading book five, and book five is my favorite, by the way, Order of the Phoenix, mm, so good. Um, by the time I finished reading book five, I think I had to wait about a month until book six came out. So that was great. And then I only had to wait one year until the conclusion to the entire series. So that was awesome. I mean... It would have been great to kind of experience it from the get-go, but it was also awesome to not have to wait years for the books to come out. But that time between when book six came out and I finished reading it in like two two days, I'm not sure. So speaking of my friend Jessica, I was staying at her house at the time in the summer because her parents were away. She was at work the night that the sixth book came out. I had already pre 
reserved mine or pre-ordered it and they were doing a midnight launch and I was like okay I'm gonna go down and get this I was with another friend I was like if I give you money can you stand in line and buy another book <laughs> so he very kindly did I got home before her because she was at work she worked in a kitchen and I was like oh Harry Potter so she comes home and she comes to the door and she goes I drove past Overweighty because that's where they're having the midnight release and she was like they're still open we can go get books and I like held one up to her and she just looked at me and pulled $40 out of her purse threw it at me took the book and was on the couch and so we both finished I think I finished a little bit before her because I wasn't working as much but we both finished in a couple days and yeah oh see we share books we share love of books we would just lay in her bed and read books it's great books are amazing but that period between the sixth one and the seventh one that December was when I discovered Harry Potter fan fictions and started down this really ridiculous slope to start writing Harry Potter fan fictions myself and now I'm writing books they're not published yet, we're working on that, but I'm writing books and it's all because my aunt got me this. I don't think I ever would have got into writing if it hadn't been for my aunt and for this book. So, very special one to me. And the last series that I'm going to talk about probably also needs no introduction, it's Lord of the Rings. Like, come on, Lord of the Rings. I only I only brought over the first one because, the, like, same with Harry Potter, I only brought over the first ones because there's a lot of books. Um, so good. I'd never really read fantasy before this and I ended up reading through all three books within about a week and when I finished I had such a sense of loss like I'd missed a story, I missed it, I read all the appendices, I went back and I started reading the series again and I've probably read the Lord of the Rings series 50 plus times like and that's a that's a lot. I've also read the Silmarillion which if you want to read the Silmarillion it's it's a hard read. The first time through is a hard read, but if you read it a second time, it's much better. The first time I read it, it was painful. I hated it, and they decided to read again, and I was like, wow, this is a really good story. It's just, it's a bit clunky, and there's a lot of names. So if you do want to read Silmarillion, I say read it twice. The Hobbit, obviously, is a good companion to this. You don't need to read The Hobbit before you read this. Uh, and honestly, given the choice between The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, I would read The Lord of the Rings. And I have this question that I always ask people, and it's if you could reread one book again for the first time, like forgetting about it, experiencing it again for the first time, what would it be? And my answer is always Lord of the Rings. Like, I wish I could read this again for the first time. So if you haven't read it, I suggest you read it. I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's too descriptive. Oh, you're reading. Oh, you spent so much time describing a tree. And I'm like, well, the tree walks and talks. So yes, give me a page of description on the walking, talking tree. But yeah, it's fantastic. 100% suggest it. But yeah, I think that's it. I got like, <laughs> I have all my books here. Do, 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 do. So yeah, if you um needed any book recommendations, those are some of my favorite books. Uh, I, yeah, I, maybe I'll do like a favorite fiction, non-fiction books. You, I'm still, at this point in my life, can never remember what fiction is and non-fiction without going fake slash non-fake. So I have some non-fiction books that I really like, so maybe I'll talk about those as well. But these are like, I would say my top fiction books. There might be some that I'm missing, and there's other ones that like I enjoyed reading. Like I have Ready Player One here. I'm not going to talk about it though, but it was a book that I really enjoyed. Uh, the Vampire Academy series was like the only one that I really liked out of that slew of all the vampire books back after Twilight. But you know, these are just some of my favorite books. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to go now because it's, it's pajama time and I'm going to go to sleep soon. So yeah, I'll uh, see you around. Mm -hmm.